everyone, welcome back. So this year, Pregones PRTT and Harlem Nine, and well, they're going global and digital for its fourth edition of 48 Hours in El Bronx. The collaborative showcase will feature 30 Latinx theater artists creating six new plays inspired by iconic images from acclaimed photographers known as Seis del Sur. Let's take a sneak peek of 48 Hours in El Bronx. How can we dance salsa virtually? How have we lived the past year virtually? Don't go outside ever. No, 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 I don't say, I'm not saying don't go outside ever. Ah, uh, you've never had her dentures thrown at you. Shut up. <gasps> don't! Your fish died, Carmen. Seriously? We ain't white. Oh, me, nene. Pura mierda. No te creas. You can you can make your way to the door to the Bronx. Hello. Hello. Trying the divine can lead to unexpected results. And joining us to tell us more about the digital presentation of 48 Hours in El Bronx, currently streaming, please welcome Pregones PRTT, Associate Artistic Director, Jorge Merced. Hi, everyone. It's always such a pleasure and such a joy to be here with Rina and with all of you. It's one of my favorite spots to talk about art and talk about culture. Besides, you get to see all the colors that are Rina Valentin right there in the screen. How, how can you go wrong? But thank you for having us. We're so proud and so uh, honored to be able to share the work about this artist who created six short plays about the Bronx. And it doesn't get any better than that. And that happened in the Bronx. So that's really cool. Okay, so I know we were a day later, right? Because it, it, it launched on Thursday, but um, it's all good. It's all good. They still have from Friday till Monday to view the streaming. Now, I do want to open up with saying that um, this whole process is normally 48 hours, but this time around, you have to expand it un poquito because you had to digitize it, right? So in realidad, it should be called the 96 hours. <laughs> and and what, a joy to, what a joy to spend 96 hours in the Bronx as opposed to 48 hours. The more time we spend in the Bronx, the better we are, right, people? <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, we had to change it. We had to. Process because you had sure, to sure, sure, sure. Because I can only imagine. God, I'm all ears. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so when we, we were set to start this when the pandemic hit last year. Uh, we all the artists have been chosen. Everybody was ready, and the week we were supposed to gather in the Bronx to to create the 48 hours. That's when everything was shut down. That's when the whole city went into hibernation, and uh, we were like, "Wow, what do we do?" So we waited. We were like, "Let's see what happens." We were not that well versed yet with ways in which we could bring all these 30 different artists together into one room, and uh, we also were very. Uh, the idea of having all these artists in our theater in the South Bronx all together for 48 hours together is a very special event. We call it like the Olympics of theater where people just do their best and they don't sleep and just stay there to create those plays. And we said, let's just see if we can come back to that moment. But then as the pandemic went on, we were like, no, 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 we, we have these artists here who are ready to create these amazing stories. And we said, I sat down with our colleagues from Harlem Nine, which we've been working with them for, uh, is the fourth? Uh, installment of 48 hours in the Bronx and uh, we all agreed that this was the time to do it and so we just turned the switch back on again and said let's do it and uh, but we had to adjust like you say Rina, a little <laughs> poquito aquí, yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, we knew that we were theater is the center of the project but in order for us to convey theater in a way that is a little bit closer to the way that you would see it in, in, in person we couldn't do it in just 48 hours because you had to film it, you had to edit it, but the plays were created in 48 hours. That didn't change. What we did is that we added an additional 48 hours for the directors to work with an editor to really bring all the footage that they brought together in those first 48 hours to come back and edit it in a way that is enjoyable and it's fun. And, uh, and I'm really happy with where the process is right now. And, uh, and it was really great, but we did switch it a little bit for the digital platform we added an, an additional 48 hours <laughs> <laughs> but i like that you went with 48 and 48 so there's still honor there with using the term 48 hours <laughs> totally totally i'm even wearing my 48 hours in the bronx t-shirt oh, right beautiful. There. i love it i love the logo no. 
So listen, uh, let's talk a little bit about how you choose the uh, the subject matters because this sure. year you chose images from a Angel Franco, Francisco Molina Reyes, Joe Canzo, Ricky Flores, David Gonzalez, Edwin Pagan, and you chose iconic images in which playwrights were to develop a story around and then directors go and direct these actors and all of this is happening within 48 hours. I know, it's great, right? It's exciting. Um, we, we, we began, that's one of the things that falls on my, my area, which is choosing the, the subject matter for each year that we do this. You should, using the, choosing the, the prompts for the artist to create their place. And last installment of 48 Hours in the Bronx, we tested a little bit with photography. What we did is that we added, we selected se several uh, Bronx subway stations and each one we selected a photo and a poem for that particular station. And that, that became the, the inspiration for the six plays that were created. And I saw how inspiring working with photos are for the playwrights and for the directors. So this year I was like, let's highlight a Bronx photography collective that has been getting all these accolades around the world called Seis del Sur. And you mentioned the names of all these amazing photographers, David, Joe, Angel, Ricky, uh, Francisco, and Edwin Pagan, our dear friend Eddie Pagan. And I asked them, I said, we're gonna go forward with what we planned, but uh, I'd like you to choose a photo that you feel is a, an iconic photo of your collection and uh, that depicts what the Bronx is for you and your connection with the Bronx. So they gave me a whole bunch. Some of them selected one and some of them gave me like four or five. I'm like, oh my gosh, I asked you to do this. But then <laughs> they sent me all that material. I was completely blown away by the images and the photos that they sent. And uh, so we gathered as much information as we could about those photos and created a document that we gave to the artist and said, this is your inspiration. But the trick is that the artists and the playwrights don't know which image or which team of artists they're gonna work with until that first, uh, first two hours of those 48 hours. They don't know. They come into this, they came into this Zoom room we presented, we gave them before in advance, like two weeks in advance, this is, this is what we're gonna be dividing. So some of them were a bit prepared and then we divide into companies. So we stuck like literally a hat on Zoom where the names are in there and people were just took the names out and we assigned a playwright and a director to each team. And then we said, now let's see what you're gonna be working with. And that's when we let them know by chance out of a hat, what, what photograph they were gonna be working with. And from that moment on, they had 48 hours to write the play, to rehearse it, and to stage it. And then we added another 40, 48 hours for the editing of another process and filming. But it was exciting to see that happening. It's true that I miss, the audience never sees this. The audience never sees the dynamics and the energy backstage during those 48 hours. And it's really amazing. So I missed that. But for those watching it, you're gonna get amazing plays about the well, book written right <clears throat> now. Well, we did give them a little sneak peek at the top of this segment, and I do want to say thank you to you for taking the time to bring it to us and also for your undying commitment to making sure that theater is presented in people's homes. Um, of course, uh, highlighting the stories uh, or our stories, I should say, of the Bronx as well as people of color. So I love that you also partnered up with Harlem Nine, which is predominantly African American. Yeah, this is a, an amazing group of colleagues. Uh, they're like family for us now. We've been working together for almost six years now and uh, creating this uh, event that celebrate that union, that conversation between people of color. And uh, for us, it was really important that we maintain that relationship and we continue to nurture that relationship between the two organizations because we believe in them. I think we have to stick together to tell our own stories as opposed to expect those with resources to really talk about things that only those of us that are intimately connected to our communities understand. And Harlem Nine is one of those organizations that like Pregones PRTT uh, is committed to giving voice to that particular participation in society, which is that that comes out of people of color. And the plays that resulted in this particular edition of 48 Hours in the Bronx truly, truly address all of that. They're very <laughs> different, each one of them. Once you get a ticket, the ticket, you can watch the plays anytime you want within that uh, between the, from the moment you buy it and until the 22nd, I, I believe of- I think it's the 20, Monday. yes, it is the 22nd, 22nd Monday. 22nd uh, yeah. of February. So you can mm -hmm. watch it like at night or you can just watch one play and say, you know what, that was too rough. Oh, that was too much and my heart needs to breathe. So you can pause 
right. and come back to it another, you know, later in the night. None of the places are gonna give you that. You're gonna you're gonna enjoy. They're a lot. They're really funny. They're, they're you're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, it's it's a great process where you determine when you want to watch it, how you want to watch them, whether you want to watch them with your family or by yourself. But you can only watch them during that time between Thursday, right. which is yesterday, yeah. and yeah. Monday. And Monday, awesome! I love it. I love it. And and I I can't stress enough, you guys. It's important for us to uh, support our local artists, our local theater, our local uh, stories. So um, I highly recommend that you do get tickets. And um, although the streaming already started, it doesn't matter. It's still available to you guys. Thank you, Jorge Meset. Uh, Pregones PRTT, uh, Associate Artistic Director, for bringing it to us. And you guys, once again, to watch 48 Hours in El Bronx. It's streaming now, but you, it can be found on harlem9.veeps.com uh, from February 18th, which already started, till February 22nd. And you can also uh, visit Pregones, PRTT.org. All right. Totally. Okay. Totally. And you can see them there. And you're going to get to see an amazing roster of artists. The playwrights this year are fantastic. Julissa Contreras, Nelson Diaz Marcano, Aisha Espinosa, Andre Osorio, Alejandra Ramos Riera, Andy Rincon. And the directors are amazing. And it's great for you to get to know the work that these artists are creating during this time. This is really difficult. So I know you're going to enjoy 48 Hours in the Bronx 2021. All right. Well, so much for wrapping up because the director wants to make sure that he gets the last word. Gracias, Jorge. Me siento quiero mucho. All right, Thank you guys. You. Get a quick break, but when we return, we're going to hear how one fashion designer turned one blessing into another blessing for others. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 